Mary Cover Jones is an important figure in the history of psychology, who made monumental contributions to developmental psychology. But these aspects of her life's work have been overshadowed by the mythic status of the Little Peter study and her association with John B. Watson in the early years of her career. Mary Cover Jones was born in Johnstown, Pennsylvania in 1897. She graduated high school in 1915 and then attended Vassar College where she developed friendships that tremendously benefited her career. One of the first to inspire her interest in psychology was her professor Margaret Washburn, a leading American psychologist in the early 20th century, who was not only the first woman granted a PhD in psychology, she also became the second woman to serve as APA president. Jones also became friends with fellow student Rosalie Rayner. During a weekend trip to New York City in 1919, Jones was steered by a friend to a lecture given by John B. Watson on his study with Little Albert. As a result, Watson cemented her desire to pursue psychology as a career and convinced her that if fear could be established where none existed before, she might be able to reduce or eliminate an already established fear. With this cemented desire, she began graduate work at Columbia University that fall. In 1923, Jones began an appointment as Associate in Psychological Research at the Institute of Educational Research of Columbia University Teachers College. It was at this point that a number of events converged to determine Jones's further association with Watson and her work with three-year-old Peter. In 1924, Mary Cover Jones explored the problem of the extinction of emotional reactions, demonstrating how experimentally produced fears could be undone. The goal of the research was to systematically study the best method for the elimination of children's fears. In the same year, she conducted her most famous experiment with Little Peter under the supervision of Watson. Little Peter was a three-year-old boy who had a fear of rabbits that was not conditioned in the laboratory. She used the method of direct conditioning so that while Peter was eating, a rabbit was brought into the room but kept at a distance great enough so as to not trigger a fearful response. Over a series of trials left in several weeks, the rabbit was brought progressively closer, always while the child was eating. Eventually, Peter got used to the rabbit and could touch it without showing fear. Other generalized fear responses to similar objects were also eliminated by this procedure. In 1926, Jones completed her dissertation with the support of Watson entitled The Development of Early Behavior Patterns in Young Children. In 1952, Jones was appointed assistant professor of education at Berkeley, despite having lectured in the Department of Psychology for several years. She became a full professor in 1959. In 1960, Jones became the president of the Division of Developmental Psychology of the APA. Jones received the G. Stanley Hall Award from the American Psychological Association in 1968 for her discoveries related to human development and behaviorism. In the 1970s, she was christened the mother of behavior therapy by colleague Joseph Volpe. Despite her behavioralist beginnings, Jones's work reflected an eclectic theoretical outlook and an emphasis on the whole person in his or her development, environment, and social context. Joseph Volpe was born in 1915 in South Africa. For a time, he was in the South African Army as a medical officer where he was treating soldiers diagnosed with war neurosis, which is now known as PTSD. Volpe was dissatisfied with electrical shock therapy, so he introduced several therapeutic techniques based on his own experimental research on fear reduction in laboratory animals. The implications of Jones' work were largely ignored for two decades, but in the late 1940s, Volpe became interested in behavioral psychology. He developed a variety of behavioral procedures for treating his patients, many of whom suffered from phobias. His best technique was termed as respiratory inhibition, and it was inspired by the findings of Little Peter experiment. The key argument for his theory is that anxiety is a learned phenomenon resulting primarily from classical conditioning. According to Volpe, respiratory inhibition is a successful treatment because it enables the client to enter the feared situation without experiencing the unpleasant sensations of anxiety. In consequence, the conditional stimulus, which is the feared object, can be presented without the unconditional stimulus of the bodily sensations, allowing extension of the conditional anxiety response to the object to be extinguished. However, he did not believe in associating eating to the feared object because he believed that anxiety and eating inhibited each other. His research suggested that involving gradual exposure to the feared stimulus paired with a positive coping experience, usually relaxation, will diminish the emotional response. 
He believed that no direct contact with the feared situation is necessary to reduce a person's sensitivity and that the same effect could be accomplished through description and imagination. Although he was not the first to suggest the use of systematic desensitization technique, but he is generally credited for applying it to the treatment of anxiety disorders. With the help of Volbay's finding, people nowadays can virtually experience a series of stressful situations through the use of goggles and computer-generated images. In 1958, Volbay published his book titled Psychotherapy and Respiratory Inhibition, and in 1959, Volpe made the claim that 90% of his patients were either cured or markedly improved, not to mention that the success rate was apparently accomplished within a few months or even few weeks. Volpe founded the Journal of Behavioral Therapy and Experimental Psychiatry. He was a member of the Association for Advancement of Behavioral Therapies in 1966. Volpe was awarded American Psychological Association Distinguished Scientific Award, the Psychi Distinguished Member Award, and the Lifetime Achievement Award, and a special award from the Association for the Advancement of Behavioral Therapy. Volpe developed two measuring systems that are still used today, which are the Subjective Anxiety Scale and the Fear Survey Schedule. Jones's study has been described as a precursor of behavior therapy, which is the application of learning principles to change maladaptive behavior. Also, Jones was a pioneer in this field and made a rich contribution to the understanding of development across the lifespan. Volpe had an important role in the development of cognitive behavior therapy as well. Volpe was at the center of groups of clinicians who worked with and learned from him, often going on to make highly significant contributions to the development of behavior therapy, Volpe's influence can also be felt in today's managed care, which favors short-term, empirically supported treatments over long-term psychotherapy. Mary Covert Jones's work has important implications about human nature. Her experiment with Little Peter helps reinforce John Locke's notion of tabula rasa, that children begin as blank slates shaped by their environment. This study also demonstrates that something as complex and personal as an emotion is subject to conditioning. This study is considered to be a defining landmark in behavioral therapy and a breakthrough in how behaviorism could be studied and manipulated in the laboratory. Jones's findings remain deeply profound, with implications not only for how we treat children's fears, but also for how to work effectively with resistant or reluctant teens and adults. Behaviorism is one of the systems of thought that considers psychology to be the science of behavior and not the introspective study of consciousness. Watson put forward a view that was a complete reaction against what he saw as the mentalism of psychoanalysis. Many younger psychologists and graduate students found his proposal for behavioral psychology appealing. Behaviorism conflicted with proponents of psychoanalysis. Volpe stated that desensitization offered several advantages over traditional psychoanalysis. These included the goal of psychotherapy can be clearly stated in every case, source of anxiety can be clearly defined, changes in the patient's reaction can be measured during sensations, therapy can be performed with other present, and therapists can be interchanged if desired or necessary.